Welcome back team to probably the dumbest but most ambitious project I've undertaken since I started this channel. Welcome back to Mikey's Freeloader Challenge, where yours truly is in the midst of attempting to freeload enough money off the internet to buy a house and thus declare the start of a Theta Gang fiefdom. This is a long road, but as the great Saudi capitalist Karl Marx once said, rise and grind, samurai. We know there are starving children out there in the world, and I don't want to be one of them. So let's put in the work and get that bread. One word of advice right off the top. If you want to do your own freeloader challenge, I strongly recommend making a burner email address for it. I didn't do that, and now my email inbox looks like this. Although it's great to know that there are African village priests out there who really care about our health and happiness, this just isn't the type of professional consultation that I crave. So take it from me. Make a burner so you don't get your email nuked. Anyway, let's get to it. We're coming off episode one with some decent cheddar. I had liquidated about $100 of gift cards from Adipole, CoinApp, Product Report Card, and Top Class Actions, $80 of which I tossed into Karma Coin, a position that is now worth about $20. So that sucked. But the project is still alive, and they just performed an airdrop for some token called Sprinkles that you can stake in something called Magic Swap. I don't really know what that means, but it sounds like the project is at least functioning, so I'm holding and trying to get my stuff staked. And the other $20 is stuck on a website called GameFlip that I'm having a really hard time withdrawing from. Together, it's only $40 left. But luckily, in episode 1, I also used CoinApp to mine $50 of XYO, and that payout has multiplied itself to over $150. XYO is worth less than a penny when I got in, and now it's cruising in at about 3.5 cents. At one point, it had touched 6 cents. Much of this gain, I believe, is the Coinbase treatment. In one of my greatest strokes of luck, XYO got listed on Coinbase Pro about a month after I bought it. This was an easy 300% gain, but this is not something I can count on happening often. What are the chances that I buy a crypto four weeks before it gets listed on Coinbase? This is why they say, the first one is free. Nevertheless, this is a good start, and this gain puts our current freeloader stash at about $190. We've got a long way to go to found a fiefdom, but this episode, I picked up the pace and freeloaded two $50 Visa gift cards, nine Amazon gift cards totaling $125, a 12-month subscription to Time Magazine, one large McDonald's soda, $215 in PayPal payouts, $12 in shitcoins, one family-sized box of Oreos, $25 of XYO, and one super sketchy made-in-China black box that I'm supposed to attach to my Wi-Fi router. I don't think I'm going to be able to liquidate this black box unless the CIA has a bounty on it, but the rest of this smorgasbord adds up to about $475. I intend to dump it into more high-risk assets and seek that bigger win. Let's talk about how I achieved it, and hopefully you'll find some tools that will work for your freeloader mission as well. Let's do it. Since I'm now dipping into more funky services than I can count, it's impossible to cover every website like I did in the first episode. So instead, I'm going to explore freeloading opportunities by bucket and note my favorite services within them. We've got the survey bucket, secret shopper bucket, clinical trials, focus groups, cryptocurrency, and since I need a fuck it bucket and can't come up with a better name, other. Let's explore by bucket and I'll show you how to use these resources for free money. First up, this one is the most promising, selling your body by being a test subject in a clinical trial. This might sound a little crazy, but I'm highly motivated, so bear with me. In late August, I got a Facebook ad from Walter Reed seeking volunteers for a clinical trial. They wanted healthy adult men to test some experimental coronavirus treatment. My Wi-Fi is a little weak, so I was prepared to receive another 5G chip in my brain, so I signed up. Unfortunately, I was late to the party and they already had enough white male test subjects, so Walter Reed recommended another trial instead. They wanted me to be the control group for their experimental malaria vaccine. For those who never took a high school science class, that means that Walter Reed needed to prove as part of their vaccine experiment that the mosquitoes they were using actually had malaria. If they put 10 experimentally vaccinated people through their study and none of them got malaria, that would be pretty good proof that the vaccine worked, right? Well, some naysayer could come back and say, how do we know those mosquitoes even had malaria to begin with? Your vaccine could be useless and we wouldn't know. So prove those mosquitoes could even transmit malaria. That's where I come in. The physician planned to give me malaria so as to prove this experiment was legit, and then he would cure me. I was a little skeptical, but then they showed me the payout list. They said, we'll pay you $3,230. I was like, all right, fuck it. 
and they started the physical. To my horror, the EKG revealed a right bundle branch blockage in my heart, and I was disqualified from the study. RBBB isn't as bad as it sounds, but it basically means that I killed some nerves in my heart by going too hard in the gym a few years ago. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but it turns out humans cannot go Super Saiyan. So if you go too hard and kill some nerves, you might set yourself up to be boxed out of malaria clinical trial in the future, which is a massive loss. Anyway, they gave me a $50 gift card for my time. Not $3,200, but it's something, and I didn't have to get malaria. As a byproduct of this study, however, Facebook is now blowing me up with invitations to the most ridiculous clinical studies. Do you have sickle cell anemia? You might be entitled to $150 for participating in our study. Hopelessly addicted to cocaine? Congrats, you qualify for our study. And here's my favorite one. Do you want to drop a deuce in this cup and mail it to us so we can screen for cancer cells? We'll pay you $200. I've been signing up to everything I remotely qualify for, so something has to go through. If I get $200 for shitting in a cup, I'll let you guys know. I rate clinical studies a 9 out of 10 on the freeloader scale and initiate coverage with a strong buy. The time commitment appears substantial so far, but many of these that I've signed up for recently are virtual only and the payouts are high. If more of these clinical tests bring me gains, I reserve the right to increase this rating to a 10. This is a huge opportunity, and I encourage every freeloader watching this to search clinical studies in their area. My recommended website is clinicaltrials.gov. Poke around on that website for a little while, and you'll soon be inundated with more targeted ads on social media than you can click on, which makes finding these trials much easier. Or if you live in Baltimore, check out parexel.com. Some of these trials offer you like $12,000 to stay in a halfway house for 10 days. For Baltimore, that's a down payment on a house right there. Next up, let's get old reliable out of the way. We've got the survey bucket. I got back into the same survey apps I used last episode. Adipol is still the easiest resource, providing me a full $150 of revenue straight to PayPal. However, $90 was from referrals, which do not count toward my total. This $90 also implies that the viewers of this channel who signed up earned a combined $900 from Adipol, so congratulations to the wider community of freeloaders. Again, that $90 doesn't count toward my freeloader pile, but thank you guys for the new Bluetooth speakers and seafood dinner. The $60 I earned myself will go right into my cash pile for investment at the end of this episode. I also kept using Product Report Card, which hooked me up with not only $125 in Amazon gift cards of assorted value, but also got me into a pair of focus groups that I'll talk about next. I also got awarded this random 12-month subscription to Time Magazine. I don't think I'll be able to liquidate the subscription for cash, unfortunately. Product Report Cards should be viewed as a gateway drug to larger freeloader opportunities. Do this survey on food delivery apps, and at the end, you'll get invited to review the quality of McDonald's cups for $30 in PayPal. We'll cover that in a few minutes as well. Overall, I rate this bucket a 7 out of 10 on the freeloader scale and reiterate my buy rating. You won't get rich off of these surveys, but the slow trickle of money helps fund larger projects, and Product Report Card will get you into a better pipeline. I strongly recommend both of these so that you can monetize the time you spend scrolling through your phone at work. My referral to Adipol is in the description. Next, let's do probably the best bucket so far, the focus groups bucket. Companies like Cox Internet or JetBlue Airlines will sometimes target an audience for their consultation on products. They want feedback on if their new promotion is good, if their commercial hits the mark, or how they can improve their image. In the past few weeks, I participated in a 30-minute one-on-one interview with a company that wants to make a new finance app. They wanted to know which features they should include, and I told them to implement some tax loss harvesting tools. They appreciated my feedback, for which I was paid $50. The following week, I joined a panel of six people to view some commercials from an internet provider that I'm not supposed to name. Their commercials all sucked, but there was one that sucked the least. For my feedback, I received $150. And finally, I helped some PhD candidate do a study on Discord to see if people enthusiastically accept their roles as mods and start power tripping. I was already familiar with this phenomenon, so that was too easy. That one paid me only $5. I thought it was $50 when I signed up, so I was a little disappointed. But in summary, this bucket is fantastic. My favorite resource is L&E Research. It's got the most useless referral program ever because you only get $1 per referral and only if 20 people sign up in the same month. But the URL for that website is long and you'll never find the participant portal on Google. So go ahead and use my referral anyway. The link is in the description. My second favorite is user interviews. Thank you Rich Nickards on Discord for showing me this one. And also Product Report Card will refer you to some of these as well. 
I rate focus groups a 10 out of 10 on the freeloader scale, and of course, initiate coverage with a strong buy rating. Next, here's a fun one. Let's move on to the secret shopper bucket. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes companies with too high of a marketing budget will ask the public for feedback on products, but they won't do this with a focus group. Rather, they'll send you on a mission and ask you about your experience. This month, I was sent to Walmart to inspect the quality of the Oreos. Since it was Walmart, the shelf looked like a kid rolled through it, but I progressed with the mission and took some pictures. The study had me buy the Oreos, taste them, and fill out a survey about my experience. For doing so, they paid me $30. Of course, I had to deduct the $4 I spent on the box, so I had a net gain of $26 and a bunch of cookies. I also participated in a study for McDonald's in which they had me evaluate a cup of soda. They wanted feedback on how environmentally friendly McDonald's was being with its plastic cups. And although they didn't get the best environmental marks, they did pay me $31.07 for my feedback, which precisely reimbursed me for the cup, tax included, plus $30 and I got to enjoy the soda. Good looking out whoever put that study together. My favorite resource for this bucket is once again Product Report Card. So far, this is the only service I've seen that refers you to these programs directly. Once you do one, Facebook will start bombarding you with offers, so before long, the offers come to you. The money here isn't huge, so I rate the Secret Shopper bucket a seven out of 10 and initiate coverage with a buy rating. Moving on, this one still sketches me out. Let's dip our hands into the other bucket. I signed up to some service called Digital Reflections Panel. They sent me this made in China black box that I'm supposed to hook up to my Wi-Fi router so they can collect my web traffic and determine which internet service providers throttle what websites. Supposedly my browsing history gets anonymized and aggregated, and I sure hope so. This was probably the dumbest idea I've had this whole time, even beating out the malaria scheme. But since I'll do like literally anything to make money, I plugged this sketchy Chinese brick into my router. To my very pleasant surprise, Digital Reflections did indeed give me a $50 Visa gift card after 60 days. I just have to cross my fingers that they didn't pull my password to my OnlyFans account, which by the way got banned because it was just memes. Anyway, although Digital Reflections did give me a solid reward at $50, I still award it a 2 out of 10 on the freeloader scale due to the fact that the Chinese are now deep in my DMs. You can use Digital Reflections on a burner network, I guess, but I don't know how to do that. So I'm just gonna take the money and bury this device deep in the forest, never to be discussed again. I initiate coverage on Digital Reflections panel with a strong sell rating. And finally, we've got our crypto platforms, Coinbase Earn and CoinApp, which generates the XYO token. Last episode, I announced that I was banned from Coinbase Earn for unspecified reasons. But as my homie Emilio pointed out, if I'm using my wife's account to earn free crypto, I should include that in my gains. And I am indeed doing that, so let's add it. Coinbase Earn is a program on Coinbase where you get paid to watch some ads on crypto projects that want to advertise their coins. You get paid directly into your Coinbase wallet, so these coins are all very easy to convert into actual cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin or Ethereum, right in the app. This month, Coinbase tossed five projects our way. I think they were Fetch, Rally, Chili's, Clover, and Bounce. I kinda lost track. All of these projects paid $3, so $15 total. I have no idea what these coins do, I wasn't really paying attention but I am happy to hold these coins to speculate. Right now, Coinbase Earn has $32 of free money for new signups, and they add a couple more of these every month when the old campaigns expire. I strongly recommend getting in on Coinbase Earn if you aren't in there already. This is literally free money. The other crypto tool is CoinApp. This is the one I used last episode to collect some in-app coin through driving and surveys, and I cashed out $50 of XYO token when it was worth less than a penny. That token is the one that got listed on Coinbase a few weeks later. Got that Brian Armstrong lovin' and is now trading at about three and a half cents. It hit six cents at one point. Anyway, I used this app to cash out $25 of coin once again, but I think I'm gonna cease and desist on this one. This app is really made for drivers, but since I don't drive often, I end up just doing the surveys, and I can get more bang for my buck doing surveys on Adipol, so this app is just no good for me. If I want XYO, it is easy to get my hands on now that it's on Coinbase. But if you're a big driver, this is definitely worth it, and it's probably worth it to upgrade to a paid plan too. This is great for a lot of people, especially our truck drivers, mail carriers, and Uber drivers. It's just not built for me, although it may be right for you. Once again, I thank Akilzu for referring me to this app. His referral link is in the description. I rate crypto a six out of 10 so far and initiate coverage with a buy rating. As I discover more free crypto opportunities, I expect to revise this up substantially. 
Before we compile our totals and choose another high risk asset to toss our money into, I want to introduce an app that I'm really confident in for the next episode. Rich Nickards from Discord referred me to CoinOut, not to be confused with CoinApp. With CoinOut, you scan your receipts for like 5 to 15 cents at a time, regardless of the value of the purchase. But Mikey, if you have to make a purchase to get the receipt, it's not free money. That's true, if they're your receipts. The goal of this challenge is to collect free money, so I collected a bunch of discarded receipts outside of Target and scanned those. You gotta draw the line somewhere, so please don't go digging through a dumpster to find receipts. But gas stations are a great source of discarded receipts, since people just toss theirs in the trash next to the pump. And if you're a cashier, keep all the receipts that people don't want and scan those. And further, once you get enough money, you can use these bonus offers from stuff like Acorns for more loot. I plan on using these extensively throughout the challenge. I'm at about $25 right now. I haven't cashed out anything yet since I just started, but I am really confident in this one. Rich Nickards' referral is in the description and pinned comment, so I encourage you to use this if this interests you. Anyway, let's sum up our totals and decide how to gamble this chunk of change. First, I have to liquidate the gift cards, and as we saw in the last episode, Game Flip is not the way. My money is still stuck on that platform. Instead, I recommend the Reddit group R Gift Card Exchange. The going rate on Amazon and Visa gift cards is something like 95-98% to 98 of the card's face value. I made an exclusive arrangement with a guy named Joe Blackwood in which I would only sell gift cards to him and he will pay me 95% each time. So out of my $225 gift cards, I have $215 of liquid cash. I coincidentally also have $215 from PayPal for a liquid total of $430. The other $37 of cryptocurrency will stay where it is. So how should I invest this $430 for more gains? After extensive consideration, I think I'm going to put this money into LedgerX.com to wheel crypto. On LedgerX, options represent one-tenth of an Ethereum or one one-hundredth of a Bitcoin. I'll work with Ethereum for now. Right now, ETH is just above $4,000, so I can use $400 to buy 0.1 ETH and write a covered call at the $5,000 strike for about $45 premium expiring November 26th. But I'll need to first deposit into BlockFi and then transfer to Ledger X because I don't want to pay the wire fee to go straight to Ledger X. But this is no issue. I'd like to keep wheeling Ethereum for a while and I've got no problem holding it, so I'll keep selling out of the money strikes as I build up this position. I'll very likely deposit more into this platform in future episodes, and I've still got $30 left in cash now. This puts my whole pot at roughly $700-ish. Next episode, I'll surely break 1000 and be at least 5% of the way toward a down payment on something. As always, drop your links to your referral programs in the description, and if I use it in the challenge, I'll put your link in the next video as well. Thanks for watching, and see you next time, freeloaders.